problem with a lot of people, though, you know what? It doesn't matter what you say, they're not going to listen. Have you shown them something? No, 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 no. It's not that. Say, so, well, it says that. It says red right there. Red. R-E-D. Yeah, but you have to read it in the spirit to understand. It means blue. <laughs> well, over here it says up. U-P. Up. Yes, but brother, you have to have faith. It means down. <laughs> okay. Whatever. Many miracles come with prophets. This is how Allah gives them the clear identification so you know you've got to follow them. In Surah Ar-Rum, for instance, it begins immediately talking about the Romans had been defeated in the nearest land, which was the Arabian Peninsula. And after this defeat, though, they're going to be victorious within three to nine years. It's a word in Arabic that means three to nine years. And sure enough, they were badly defeated in Antioch in 613. And as a result, the Persians swiftly pushed them on all fronts. It was hard to imagine the Romans would ever defeat the Persians. But sure enough, the Quran was right because the Romans were victorious within three to nine years. It was in the year 622, nine years after the Romans' defeat, the two forces met again on Armenian soil. The result was decisive victory in favor of the Romans. MashaAllah. Prophecy was fulfilled. Now that's a prophecy though in the time of Muhammad. So the detractors from Islam would say, well, well, he made it up. After the fact. Never mind the fact that we know when it was revealed because people were reciting it. But they'll still say, well, I don't believe that. I don't want to believe that. It's not mentioned in this book, but most of you will know it when I mention it to you. The most amazing miracle that I know of dealing with the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is one that I thought about after I saw a movie called Back to the Future. Haram, haram. Anyway. <laughs> the movie Back to the Future talks about a guy who goes in the past, then he wants to go back to the future. They had another sequel to it where he goes into the future, then a third sequel to it where he goes in the future, and then he goes way in the past, back to the Old West, and then goes back and forth. He's going back and forth and back and forth. Michael J. Fox was in that. But I thought about this and then I thought about something. Nobody could really predict things that happened in the ancient past that people are arguing about. They don't even know what it is for sure. But somebody to predict something in the past and then make a connection with that to something in the future. Do you think somebody could do that? That would be really tough. I want you to take a subject that happened, let's say, 3,000 years ago, okay? And I want you to take that subject and then predict something about it 1,500 years from now, and let's see how well you can do. Well, the good news is you won't be here, so nobody could blame you. <laughs> but the Quran is still here, and we just found out something in the 1970s. An amazing thing. For a long time, centuries, not just the Christians, but even some of the Jews, people have been arguing about Moses, alayhi salam. Did he really even exist? Or was he just somebody that they made the story up about? Big time scholars of the Bible have actually said that this is just a nice story. There really wasn't anybody named Moses. There wasn't anybody named Pharaoh. There really was no incident of the Jews being taken into captivity or the punishment that they went through and then being saved and taken away from that. It's just something that somebody made up. And they even say it was made up probably during the Babylonian exile, which did happen. This is on record. And when they came back from it, they just put all that together to kind of, you know, encourage the troops and stuff like that. This is actually in books that I've read about the scholars of the Old Testament. So the Prophet وسلم, only repeats what he hears. 
The angel Jibril is a representative of Allah and tells him to recite. He recites. And what he hears, he recites. And the people recite the same thing. And we've been doing that mouth to ear and ear to mouth ever since. In the Quran, there's a statement. A strange statement that was actually discovered by a non-Muslim in the early 70s. He was one of the world's top surgeons and lecturers, scientists from France, Dr. Maurice Bukai. He was asked to go to Cairo, Egypt to examine the corpse of a mummy. They wanted to do some forensic work on it to get some information and discover whatever they could from this mummy. He was amazed because he said, we can prove that this person died of drowning. He was asphyxiated, meaning that his lungs filled with water and he died from this. He said, therefore, I have to conclude from this and the time period, this fits exactly the story of the Bible, this was Pharaoh of the time of Moses. And he was so amazed, he was shocked. But do you know what happened? The people in Cairo, happened to be Muslims of course, they said, this is no big deal, we already know that. <laughs> he said, yes, but we've discovered him. And they said, well, we know that too. He said, no, I mean, we, this is his body. And it's here. And they said, well, we know because it's in the Quran. He said, the what? So he gets introduced to a subject called the Arabic language. He began to study it until he could understand the Arabic well enough to actually translate for himself every single word. Because he wanted to know what is this book. Because it says in it that Allah is going to punish Pharaoh in a very specific way that he is going to drown him but he's going to preserve his body as a sign and sure enough he's a sign for all to see today because that body has been put on tour and taken all around the world to show this Pharaoh if you haven't seen it I have I saw it when it was an exhibition in Chicago happened to be up there went to the museum and saw it They've toured this body around the world and said, most likely, this could be Moses. The, not Moses himself, but the Pharaoh of Moses' time. There he is. Amazing. Huh? But that's not where it ends. Dr. Bukhai continued his study until he managed to go through the disciplines of geology and geography, astronomy, embryology and prove without a shadow of a doubt that every single reference in the Quran to science is absolutely emphatically proven to be correct. It was his book that was first published in the French language that really stood the science people up on their ear. It was translated then into the English language and it was called in English the Bible the Quran and science. He wrote another book, The Origin of Man, because it became evident without any doubt what Allah had said in the Quran proves there is a God, a creation, and human beings did not come from monkeys. And we believe that as Muslims. Although I still wonder, you know, when I look at my brother-in-law, I can't help but think that, never mind, this is another subject. <laughs>